our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight, coming to you live on CGTN from Beijing. I'm Tian Wei. A meeting of minds with the five countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, better known as the BRICS. Though this year, no surprise, is being held virtually due to the pandemic, Russia is hosting the summit, which was supposed to take place in St. Petersburg in July. This year's theme, BRICS Partnership for Global Stability, Shared Security and Innovative Growth. The summit is seen to help BRICS countries draw on each other's strengths and cooperate on curbing the pandemic and getting on the road of recovery and growth. Together, these five countries make up about uh, 42 percent of the global population and over 20 percent of the global GDP. Chinese President Xi Jinping is one of the leaders who delivered a video address. The global public health system is facing a severe test. Human society is going through the most serious pandemic in the past century. We will actively consider providing vaccines to BRICS countries where there is a need to support the development of the BRICS vaccine R&D center China has designated its own national center I propose that we convene a BRICS symposium on traditional medicine to explore its role in coronavirus prevention and treatment For more on the BRICS summit, we are joined in Moscow by Sergei Sanakoev, president of the Russian Chinese Analytical Center in Cape Town via Skype. Sanusha Naidu, senior research associate with the Institute for Global Dialogue, and in our Beijing studio, Liu Baocheng, dean from the Center for International Business Ethics from University of International Business and Economics. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. This is a big day for the BRICS countries. One of the very few occasions when world leaders actually could meet and discuss some of the important issues. Ms. Seneca, uh, Mr. Senekoa, tell me more about this uh, innovative center and initiative involving both vaccines and also prevention control regarding COVID-19. <coughs> okay, uh, so the 12th uh, BRICS summit um, chaired by President Putin just uh, recently ended and uh, now we can say that we are all witnessing very important events in geopolitics as we all uh, observe uh, the most important summits uh, involving the leaders of our countries in a short uh, period of time. I uh, can remind you that uh, just uh, last week was the summit of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Today was uh, summit of BRICS countries. In two days would be the summit of APIC countries and in a few also days would be G20. Mm. So uh, certainly all, all the attention of the whole world is paid to these uh, summits and uh, our leaders, mostly certainly the leader of China and Russia, is uh, very attentively Hearing. So, what we can say, certainly the most important topic uh, is, uh, unfortunately, that it was uh, expected that the most important topic is uh, fight against uh, new coronavirus uh, disease and the pan a pandemic. And uh, I think the all countries of BRICS uh, showed how we should cooperate uh, all together. Uh, when we are uh, uh, against some uh, right. uh, challenge of uh, and virus and such, such kind of uh, Yes, indeed. I want to go to Ms. Naidu so in South very, Africa very also about the same question. What about that uh, innovative ideas of cooperation regarding vaccines, regarding research or uh, prevention and control and also sharing of data and the latest the practices. Uh, Ms. Naidu, uh, COVID-19 is really the key word for this year. How will this uh, swift shift of focus among the BRICS countries be able to bring all of these economies together once again? 
Uh, good day, Ms. Ray, and to my colleagues both in the studio and so in Moscow. To see you. I think it's a fundamental question that you have raised. I think what COVID-19 has done is that it has asked global leaders, and in particular, I think it has asked the world over, not just state leaders, but I think civil society, uh, humanity in general, to consider the way in which we think about the global multilateral governance agenda. And, and I think what the BRICS has done is that this is not something that uh, just uh, this kind of surprise the BRICS. I think the whole cooperation in science and technology, the cooperation in data, manage, data sharing, knowledge sharing, has been in the making for the first decade of the BRICS. I mean, this is now that we entered the second decade from 2009 uh, to 2019, and, and of course now we see what COVID has done. I think it will bring the BRICS together closer in terms of what kind of diplomacy they want to see. Mm -hmm. I think the, the President Xi Jinping has raised a fundamental question about looking at indigenous knowledge systems, looking at traditional medicine, but also I think the pandemic has raised the question of how we take global health security further and much more serious in terms of zoonotic diseases, in right. terms of early warning systems, but more importantly, I think in terms of a pandemic diplomacy around global governance because this is not just about China or Africa about those countries mm. or other countries that are going to be affected this is a global pandemic with a global phenomenon of impact absolutely and, and it really needs to be paid attention to at various platforms including this platform of the BRICS countries the emerging economies and now professor Liu there were discussion earlier you know about whether BRICS are still uh, working as one body uh, whether there are enough uh, consensus going on among the economies but certainly with the economies have to handle the challenges of COVID-19 at various uh, stages uh, China is no exception of that how do you see this topic and this crucial issue will bring these emerging economies, 20% of the global uh, population, together once again. Yeah, people normally say a common enemy unites. Now the COVID-19 is a common enemy yes, to indeed. humanity, but now we do see a divided uh, approach uh, towards the uh, treatment, and there has been finger pointing, etc. But I've not really seen uh, the uh, uh, wrongful blame uh, within the uh, BRICS countries. So therefore we have a uh, solid base to work together and also the fact that China has uh, been uh, approved uh, up to uh, 7 billion uh, from the uh, new development bank or BRICS bank uh, for the uh, contingency to uh, attack on the COVID-19 is really mm -hmm. a fruition of the cooperation between the member countries supporting this new, uh, new financial platform. And uh, uh, so far as I know, there has been collaboration in research and the clinical uh, studies among different members of the country. So President Xi has generously expressed to the world that uh, uh, any outcome, actually we are having outcomes uh, mm -hmm. from the uh, successful development of vaccine can be shared uh, around the world, but uh, the, the members, are, yeah, they, uh, as a public good, and they, they uh, definitely, uh, because the uh, Chinese research uh, is really, uh, you know, uh, to a certain degree sponsored by the uh, uh, new BRICS Bank. So, therefore, definitely there has been a priority for distribution and collaboration among these uh, BRICS countries to uh, address mm. the vaccine issues. You know, you think about it, um, Ms. And I do uh, that all the members of the BRIC countries are actually members of the World Health Organization. And these economies are the largest numbers of a population and also a huge percentage of the global GDP. So if these economies would be able to gather together and be able to deal with it in a scientific way, uh, in a sustainable way about uh, a pandemic, and not this one, not only this one, but also, you know, to prevent further uh, challenges. That would be really an impressive thing for the world to have a relief, isn't it, uh, Ms. Naidu? Absolutely. I mean, in a perfect world, this should not, there should be no questions around vaccine nationalism, finger pointing, questions about who releases a vaccine first, who gets access to it, questions around value chains and distribution networks, uh, and more importantly, inter uh, TRIPS, when TRIPS, which is really inter inter intellectual property rights and in investment measures, which just seems to become the, the, the kind of 
disparate nature of negotiations at the WTO. Right now at the WTO, I think uh, South Africa and India have been very vocal about how important it is to have a universal access to a vaccine because this, this vaccine knows, I mean, this in infection knows no boundaries, mm. it knows no race, it knows no color, it knows no, no class. The problem we're having here is that we are seeing a shift in terms of the center of power with regard to pharmaceutical production, the fact that there's been monopolistic power with regard to the global health security. And I like the point that was made earlier about the fact that this is about a global public good. This is the fact that if we don't address this in the context of how we roll out a global public good right. because it is an international crisis, we are not going to have the kind of production in, in the economy that we need. I think for Africa, and I just want to make this point, in Africa it is really about how do we enhance and support that kind of infrastructure around health security, human security, mm -hmm. and more importantly around the fact that it's not just about uh, being a recipient of, of a vaccine or, or, or buying a vaccine, but rather how do we enhance uh, continental value chains around supply networks, manufacture, production, and distribution at source. A lot of issues you touch on, Ms. Naidu. Uh, Professor Liu, I want to go to you also about that. We are seeing a world that is really evolving as we speak. A lot of moving factors, and this moving factors ranging from uh, international governance to geopolitics to scientific development to the lack of uh, uh, regulations and structures for the latest uh, challenges we have, COVID-19 is one of them, uh, really putting a lot of pressure and dampening effect on what we are experiencing right now. So will the BRICS countries, mainly emerging economies, uh, be able to come up with some innovative ideas and test among themselves and so that they could use it as a case study for the rest of the world when the rest of the world is trying to figure out some appropriate policy. That is the significance of BRICS, I guess, in this regard. Yeah, you touched on the, uh, a very fundamental aspect of uh, human collaboration and human competition because uh, right now uh, with the new technology on the horizon, and with the landscape is changing very rapidly uh, between uh, countries over geopolitics. So uh, it is really a critical time to test the uh, will and the wisdom of those political leaders, whether they can really build a consensus over the universal value, right. and then whether they can come up with concrete plans uh, instead of only talking about principles and orthodox uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I really congratulate the uh, BRICS summit by producing the solid BRICS bank. Concrete uh, results. Yeah, very also concrete results time, uh, and very effective yeah, in supporting mm. uh, many of those projects successfully uh, for sustainable development. We don't need too much politics. I mean, politics is already having such a huge burden on all of us, uh, Mr. Senekoev. Uh, uh, for example, elections in certain countries are already having a huge impact on the rest of the world, and that politics still continue. Putting that aside, uh, how will the BRICS countries handle the uncertainties of geopolitics at this moment, uh, and also be able to concentrate really, as the leader said today, pledged today, on the recovery of the economy, which will have a huge impact on everybody's life, especially in an emerging economy, that we, as we are talking about. I think we are showing the good way of cooperation. Uh, you have just mentioned that uh, we are like a single body, like a common body. And it's very important because right now, as I have already told, we are in the time of preparation to G20. And our opinion is the same in a very, very uh, big uh, uh, topics, uh, a lot of topics. Uh, which are important in uh, agenda today. Mm -hmm. One of these is certainly what is happening all over the world in elections and how the world is going to go to the future. And I think the, we show the difference between uh, what is uh, the way of Western scenario of globalization today uh, and uh, what we are thinking, the BRICS countries, about our future that we think ab about multilateralism 
and uh, multi uh, uh, polar multipolar uh, uh, world uh, world order. Yeah. And this is the difference. And we, we think that we show how to, we can all together, humanity can cooperate together. Ms. Daidu, you know, when we talk about multilateral world, that is not a guarantee, as the Secretary General of the United Nations recently said in the Bloomberg conference. It's not a guarantee for peace. I remember even before the World War I, there were, you know, multiple polars of powers in the world, but eventually it ended up into a world war. Uh, which devastating uh, for all, all of our lives. But, you know, how can we make sure it will be multilateral, but at the same, multipolar, but at the same time, uh, economy will be able to come to consensus. In fact, the BRICS countries could be an interesting example of that and a showcase of it, as uh, these economies have very different culture, very different, uh, you know, political background even, and also quite different road ahead uh, given their uh, different agenda. But uh, if they could be able to come up to consensus like reflected in the New Development Bank, uh, they could be quite an example for the rest of the world, particularly at this crucial moment. Ms. Naidu, do you think though, the question really is, uh, that the BRICS country will be able to brave the storm, as they say, Ms. Naidu? I think you've, you've touched on a critical point, and that is the ability to be diverse but also have consensus. And what I find interesting right now, if the, if the BRICS wants to go forward and, and are going forward with the kind of maturity and the kind of level of engagement they're showing around pandemic diplomacy, early warning systems, is that you can have a mini multilateral within the BRICS that shows how consensus and agreement on particular issues which are critical. It's not just about the fact that you want to create alternative institutions. The fact of the matter is the entire multilateral system, as you rightly pointed out, is in a state of crisis, mm -hmm. but more importantly, it is in a state of uh, conflictual uh, analysis, in mm -hmm. conflictual identity. So the idea of a peaceful coexistence doesn't exist within this multilateral right now because everybody is scrambling to say, well, the center of power or the way in which the power dynamics have evolved is that there's multiple, there are multiple centers of power. So the plurilateral nature of our international system means that organizations and groupings like BRICS or SCO or any other grouping that can come together, we have to start giving that traction. And mm. I think the BRICS has an opportunity to do that with the way in which it has converged around this pandemic diplomacy, around the fact that the only way you can get out of this whole question of the COVID-19, and I'd like to say that we have to coexist with the COVID-19 pandemic for a long time. Right. It's not just going to go away. And so that means the disparity or the diversity of economies of scale, culture, yeah. political dimensions, etc., means that every one of the BRICS has a common agenda because there's no winners in this pandemic. No. They are losers if you don't start to rectify and repurpose the multilateral. Right. We talk about a lot of issues. Uh, so, do, so did the leaders of the BRICS economies uh, today. Uh, but if you look at these issues, uh, Professor Liu, there are several things that are important. One is the trends, right? You got sustainable development as one of the important trends and digitization of various forms, one important trend. But on the other hand, you have a lot of issues lined up. COVID is only one of them. Uh, wealth gap, which our guests, uh, guests have already touched on, uh, both geopolitical and economic trade, a lack of governance is also another one. Uh, and we also see uh, different kinds of, uh, you know, demographic change as well among the BRICS countries. So, Professor Liu, you know, when you look at the agenda of leader today, and you look at all the challenges that the BRICS countries have as a whole together with the rest of the world, how to prioritize at this moment, I guess, uh, it also uh, needs a real uh, cool mind leadership. Yes. Uh, well, if you talk about all the grand goals, you know, the uh, security, prosperity, good health, etc., everyone mm. will have to agree. But the issue is that we have so many global platforms and leaders are very busy with, uh, you know, running around different platforms, as my colleagues has mentioned. But uh, 
uh, we do need a concrete deliverable uh, through yeah. you know how to utilizing those uh, you know uh, platforms and uh, what you mentioned is very important is that where is the priority you need really to ca uh, you, uh, cascade and make a roadmap and uh, uh, to create a starting point mm -hmm. uh, so as we say that a BRICS bank is a starting point and uh, you know to start with uh, car uh, with projects uh, which can really serve people's uh, you know public good that is uh, uh, perfectly okay now yes the most urgent issue is to address the COVID-19 but uh, you know the people still need to live and survive on daily basis That's right. so therefore economy economic recovery is something that we need to move forward uh, through e effective collaboration and for that between these members trade and to reduce unnecessary regulatory barrier is the key instead you know in addition to continuously reduce the uh, tariff uh, that is uh, blocking Mm -hmm. the trade and adding uh, further cost to businesses. And if you think about it, you know, if, if the BRICS countries are not moving ahead, the other countries, the other pl pl platforms are going to do the job. If you look at RCEP, which is one of the most impressive uh, uh, free trade, the multilateral platforms just being established by Asian, Southeast Asian countries, ASEAN, 10 of them, uh, and then three uh, of the Northeastern economies, uh, China, Japan, South Korea, together with the Oceanians, you know, New Zealand and Australia, they are already stepping ahead and say, this is what we want, and let's just put it out there. What about you guys? So what will be the BRICS doing? That will be an interesting next step to watch, particularly at a time when COVID-19 is still challenging the economy. So if I could invite every one of you, we use one minute to help us to understand how is your economy trying to cope and what do you think is the in initiatives that can be moving all of us forward. What would you say? One minute for every one of you. And Ms. Naidu, would you like to start from South Africa? Yeah. No, I think it's absolutely necessary that we cannot afford to pick, uh, we cannot afford to remain isolated from what just happened and, 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 and it's a momentous uh, formalization of, an, of, a, of a multilateral trading space in Asia. I think the, the most important thing for us in South Africa is to be able to understand that the economy or the economic of the science is also important in terms of the science of the economy. Because I think the problem here is that we've got to understand that we have to manage the, 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 the economy and people have to live, but in a manner that we are able to also understand how do we actually redefine our behavior under whether it's a pandemic, whether it's early warning systems, because as, every time we shuffle, the infection shuffles with us. So right. I think what is important here is to understand where the pulse points lie for opportunities through these regional multilateral agreements. And I think the RCEP is a fantastic en engagement around having that kind of mm -hmm. uh, relationship with value chains and production. Right. And Mr. Mr. Senakoev, uh, what is your idea? How is Russia coming up with, you with your own way of recovering from the current uh, uh, difficulty, particularly economy? One minute, if you can, sir. Um, you know, when uh, mankind has too many challenges, too many problems, as we have just discussed, I think we should think about the most important. And in my opinion, the most important bricks in this world <laughs> is uh, one brick is uh, uh, the world heritage of uh, the great victory in Second World War. And second brick in this world is uh, President C's uh, theory of shared future of mankind. And on the base of these two bricks, we can construct a new, uh, new order, economical order, certainly multipolar order, and uh, without monopoly of U.S. dollars as a currency of payment, what we are doing when we are talking about the payments in national currencies between BRICS countries. Mm. So all these things will make a good world and a more uh, uh, secure world. Great this, point. I think, is most important. Great point there. And uh, Professor Liu? I think for China, uh, the uh, first priority is really to safeguard the initial triumph against the COVID-19 because without uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, concern for safety, so we cannot really move forward. And now we do uh, notice there are sporadic, uh, you know, the uh, breaks uh, out of those uh, viruses. And on the other is that uh, uh, we, we do need to keep the jobs. 
and to do a better homework at home, uh, you know, in, in the country. But uh, in the meantime, we do wish that uh, China can play a more proactive role uh, in having a major breakthrough mm. uh, for the uh, BRICS countries by uh, setting up a more of a rule-based international trade and uh, intra-investment mm. so that uh, we can really reduce the unnecessary barriers that block uh, the uh, cost-effective uh, collaboration between right. these uh, uh, countries and their communities. You know, ladies and gentlemen, some of the work have been delayed for too long due to the pandemic and due to geopolitics uh, in certain corners of the world. It is really time for all of us to roll up our leaves and really do something about it. Uh, thank you, the three of you, for joining us. And all the best luck to you and your beloved ones uh, in the BRICS countries. I want to do that to you as well, uh, uh, Mr. Senakoev. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sergei Senakoev from Russia. Thank you. Sanusha Naidu from uh, South Africa. And Liu Baocheng from China. Thank you.